Hi everyone, welcome back to Poetology. I'm Dan and this video will be about how I organize my work using a Hobonichi Cousin Planner. I've had quite a few questions from friends who know I like planning as well as clients who are curious about how I organize my time and I don't always have a strict way of organizing my time. It actually evolves quite a lot over time. I try different strategies at different times depending on my needs and what seems to be working and what isn't working. But what keeps the structure going for me is having used that same planner for at least three or four years now, from the time that I was working on my PhD to starting out as a freelancer and a writer. The best thing for me to do is to just show you how this book works. I decided to do it now because I've got this brand new planner and it protects people's privacy because I find it difficult to show one that is already written into with all that it entails about data protection and all that. So I'll show you in the blank one instead. I hope this video is useful and enjoyable. Last year I had this Hobonichi cousin which I've been using for several years actually with this particular cover. I still love the dog cover but it's a little tattered and the bookmarks have frayed and keep breaking. So I thought I would get myself a new one and since it's time to change I decided to share it with you and show you what I got. So this is my new Hobonichi cover. It's an Animal Crossing cover. I'll remove the plastic wrap. It's a very nice Animal Crossing theme and it's no secret for people who know me that I have a Nintendo Switch and I've played Animal Crossing for hours and hours during the consecutive lockdowns. And what I love particularly is the little sticker sheet that comes with it. It's adorable. And yeah, the bookmarks have little Animal Crossing leaves. And this is the Hobonichi Cousin for the new year. It comes in this nice packaging. I also have the pen. I don't actually use this because I use fountain pens, but I'll take it as an example. One important thing about the way I use my work planner is that I don't use it for most engagements and meetings and different appointments I have. For that purpose, I use the Hobonichi week. So I have the weeks here. It's the year of the rabbit. And this one has space like this to put um, notes for every day. So if I have an appointment, if I have to meet someone, if I have a Zoom call, it goes here, or if I have to go somewhere, everything is here. I write in small handwriting, so space is not an issue for me. And if necessary, you can add indications on the right-hand page. This is also where I write notes, like phone numbers, addresses, quotes. Um, whenever I need a bit of paper, it actually goes here and centralizes everything. So this is where I put that, which means that my work planner is solidly for work. And here's how it works. At the beginning of the year, you have this double page called turning the page to a new year. And this is where my intentions go. So I reflect on what I would like to do during the coming year, what my most important goals are, how I feel about it, things like that. I will sort of journal and jot down a few things there. And that enables me to refer back to it during the year and especially at the end of the year. So I will take the old one and reread it and see what I've done. Often I find that my focus has shifted and that's all fine. But it's just a way of reflecting on the year to come. And I really appreciate it. And then every month there's also a monthly page. So I like to have some goals for the month. Usually I write down three goals. Occasionally it's more, but generally speaking, three main goals or some intentions I have. Just trying to define what my priorities are. I don't panic if I don't reach them. It's just a way of staying focused. It's more about the ritual, I think, about the process of thinking of what's important and reflecting back on it 
and trying to move things forward. Yes, Lily, it's a very good idea to do that, isn't it? Right, that's my housemate's cat. Okay, okay, yeah. Thank you, Lily. So after this, you get one page per day. So there's plenty of space. And as I said, my appointments don't go there. So what I do is actually mostly note-taking. Sometimes it's a to-do list for the week. Then the next day might be notes on a book for a review I'm writing. Or it can be what I'm planning to do for my next YouTube videos. Notes from a meeting or an online course I'm taking what I plan to do, um, what I plan to write. So basically I use my work planner as a way to centralize all of these ideas into one notebook and also as a way of keeping the process going because I know that every day or almost every day I will be taking time to make some progress with my work in one way or other. And when you're working on your own as a freelancer or as a student, I did a PhD before freelancing, so I always had a project going and I had to make sure I would stay in touch with the project and keep making progress. So that's what these pages are for. And in order to keep some kind of order, I go to this six month spread here. There are two double pages with it. And I write the title of whatever I wrote. So for example, here I would say book review so and so and I would copy it under the corresponding day, book review so-and-so, so that here I have an index of my entire work planner, and that's how I use it. I often also take some notes either at the top or at the bottom um, to say what the most important focus was on that month. So if I've been working on creating a new course, I will write it. So I have an idea of the main projects I was working on at any given time, which also makes it easier to refer back to the index and find where the information I'm looking for is situated, even several years later if necessary. Now if I need to actually outline my days, this gets done in this section of the cousin, where there is a week on a double page. So again, you can write down your priorities on the left-hand side and then write down what you're doing on every day and there are hours from 5 a.m. to 4 a.m. so you can work pretty much <laughs> 24 hours a day which I do not recommend but there's space for every everything here. Usually I more or less ignore it. I basically have morning, afternoon and sometimes evening and I will write what I'm planning to do for each of these times on there. Sometimes it's just a, an exercise on a Monday to see how much I might get done during that week by fitting my items into the slots that are available. I try not to overdo it. Again, I try not to panic if I don't actually achieve everything, but it helps me clarify in my mind what I want to do and in what order when I feel overwhelmed especially. So I don't use it every week, but it's always there if I need it. And it's a very helpful section when things get busy and I need to actually get well organized to make sure everything gets done. Now there's a section I haven't been using for a while. When I was doing a PhD, especially towards the end when I was writing up, I used to put a sticker on each day when I was writing. So whenever I wrote that day, I would add a little sticker. That's because I'm still a child, I guess. I love stickers and they make me very happy. So stickers are working for me. It was like a small reward and when I was writing up I also added the number of words for the day just as a bit of accountability and to keep track of the pace I was going at. In earlier stages of the PhD I was not putting myself under much pressure to produce a lot of writing. Just as long as I took some notes every day or added a paragraph every day I was happy. Towards the end I had to push a little bit more so I would keep things accountable there. This year I was thinking of doing this for poetry, simply writing the title of new poems on days when I've written them and that way I will be able to flick through the pages and see if I've written poems every month, every week. Um, it's a bit 
of motivation to keep going and it will give me a better idea of the pace at which I'm working because it tends to be quite irregular, which, you know, is fine. But I think it will be a nice way of doing that. Here you can have a quick look. If I have a major deadline, I might add it to the calendar here just so I have the bigger picture, but I don't use this that much. I might do it if there's a course I'm teaching over the summer, maybe market, or I'm teaching a big course in January to April, so maybe I'll add that as well, just to make sure I don't forget important deadlines. Here's the index, here's the tracker, here's the place for organizing, here's the place to define goals, and here is where I do the work itself keep my notes and everything. At the end, there are a few more blank pages, but not very many. So it's possible to keep some important info there if necessary. And I will sometimes add notes of books I've read and things like that at the end here. I'm not sure yet whether I will use it this year, but I like it. It enables you to track a hundred items. So books I've read, for example, although I tend to do that in my Hobonichi week. I hope you find this interesting. So that's my new Hobonichi cousin for 2023. As you can probably tell, I'm quite excited about my use of planners. I also have this pouch by Hobonichi that I use as a wallet. And it's great because there's so much space inside for all kinds of things. Plus, there's that pocket at the back where I simply slide my Hobonichi weeks. So that's what I take with me most of the time in my bag. Whereas this, as I said, is more something I take with me if I know I'm going to do some work. I take it to cafes quite a lot to write down things that I'm working on because that's one way that I find helps me clarify my mind is leaving the house, going somewhere sitting for a bit and working there. So when I can do it, I'm very happy to use that time. I use Hobonichi because I've fallen in love with that brand, but it is expensive, a little ridiculous if you're not a die-hard fan. You can use any other planner system, but what is key is to keep it going over time so that you can experiment and learn more about yourself and your patterns of working. It really helps me to have an analog planner because that empty page is staring at me I love having completed planners. I like to write on every single page. Also, it's important to know that I don't always just write one page per day. I may not write anything on Monday and Tuesday, and then on Wednesday I write three pages all in one go because I'm reviewing a book and I need to take notes. And I use the weekend in a similar way, just whenever I need the space, but I more or less stay on top of it and that keeps me going, it keeps me working, it keeps me focused on my objectives and it's the best system I've found so far. Let me know if you like this idea and what other systems you use in the comments below. I look forward to hearing from you. Please subscribe if you haven't already and I hope to see you again very soon. Bye!